live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in New York City, this is theCUBE's coverage of our fifth annual uh, annual event that we put on ourselves in conjunction with Strata Hadoop, now called Strata Data. This is theCUBE, we've been covering the scene here at Hadoop World going back to 2010, eight years of coverage. Um, John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE. Usually Dave Vellante's here, but he's down covering the Splunk Conference. And who was there yesterday was no other than Josh Rogers, my next guest, the CEO of SingSort. You were with Dave Vellante yesterday in live on theCUBE in Washington, D.C. Yes. For the Splunk.conference. Kind of a big data conference, in itself, but it's a proprietary yeah. branded event for themselves. This more industry event here in Big Data NYC, the event we put on. Um, welcome back, I'm glad you flew up on the, on the, uh, the, the, the Concord jet, <laughs> private jet. Yeah. Yeah. Coach. Yeah, early morning, but uh, it was fine. No cool. problem. Great to see you. Yep. Uh, CEO of SingSort, you guys have been busy. Yes. Um, for the folks watching in the CUBE community, know that you've been on many times. For the folks that are, that are learning more about the CUBE every day, you guys had an interesting transformation as a company. Take a minute to talk about where you've come from and where you are today. Certainly a ton of corporate development activity in your right. end. Yep. As you guys are seeing the opportunities, you're moving on them. Yep. Yes. Take a minute to explain. So it's you know it's been a, a, a great journey so far, and there's a lot more work to do. But um, you know, Syncsort is one of the first software companies, right? Founded in the in the late '60s. Um, today, has uh, <coughs> a unparalleled kind of franchise in the mainframe space. Um, but over the last 10 years or so, we've branched out into open systems and delivered high de um, high performance data integration solutions. Uh, and about four years ago, really started to invest in the big data space. We had a DNA around performance and scale, and we felt like that would be relevant uh, in the big data space. We, um, we delivered a, a Hadoop-focused product, and today we focus around that product around helping customers ingest mainframe data assets into their Hadoop clusters, along with other mm -hmm. uh, types of data, but a, a specific focus there. Um, that has led us into understanding a bigger market space that we call big iron to big data. Um, and what we see in the marketplace is that customers are adapting. Well, just, just before you get sure. in there, big, I love that term, big iron means big data. You know, I love big iron. It used to be a term for the mainframe for the younger generation right. out there. But you're really talking about, you guys have leveraged experience with the, with the install base activities at scale. Call it batch, multi, single thread, or whatever you yeah. want to call it. But as you got into the game of big data, you then saw other opportunities. They get that right? So yep. you got into Absolutely. the game with some Hadoop. Then you realize, whoa, there's I can do a, some a large scale. Opportunity. What and was that opportunity? What well, was the, the opportunity is that you know, large enterprise is absolutely investing heavily in, in the next generation of analytic technologies, and you know, a new stack. Hadoop is a part of that, Spark is a part of that. Um, and, and they're rapidly adopting these new infrastructures to drive deeper analytics, to answer bigger questions, and, and improve their business in, in multiple dimensions. Um, the opportunity we saw was that you know, the, the ability for those enterprises to be able to integrate this new kind of architecture with the you know, legacy architectures, the old architectures that were powering key applications and key uh, producers of data was a challenge. You know, there was multiple kind of technology mm -hmm. challenges, there's, there's cultural challenges, um, and, and we had this kind of expertise on both sides of the house. And, and we found that to be unique in the marketplace. And so we've put a lot of effort into understanding, you know, defining what are the challenges, you know, kind of in that big iron to big data space that help customers maximize their value out of um, these investments in next generation architectures. And we define the problem two ways. One is, or two components. One is that people are um, generating more and more data and more and more touch points and driving more and more transactions with their customers. And that's generating increased load on their compute environments. And they want to figure out, how do I run that? You know, if I have a mainframe, how do I run that as efficiently as possible, contain my costs, maximize availability and uptime? Um, and at the same time, I've got all this new data that I can start to analyze, but I got to get it from the p area that it's produced into this next generation system, and there's a lot of challenges there. So we've started to isolate, you know, wh what are the specific use cases that present customers' challenge and deliver very differentiated solutions. Overarching kind of message is around, and positioning is around solving the big iron to big data challenge. You guys have done some acquisitions, have been successful. Yep. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ones that you like right now that have happened in the past year, two sure. years, I think you've done five in the past two years. A couple key notable ones that set you up, kind of give you a pole position for some of these big markets. Sure. Um, and then after we talk about that, I want to talk about your ecosystem opportunity. But let's sure. talk about the acquisitions. What's working for you? What's been the big, uh, big deals? So the the, the larger the, the larger we did in 2016 was um, 
uh, a company called Trillium, leader in the data quality space, long time uh, leader in the data quality space. And the opportunity we saw with Trillium was to complement our data movement and integration capabilities. You know, a natural complement, but to focus very specifically on how to drive value in this next generation architecture. Um, you know, particularly in things like Hadoop. You know, what I'd like to be able to do is apply best in class data quality routines directly in that environment. And so we, um, from our experience in delivering these big data solutions in the past, we knew that we could take a lot of their technology and create um, really powerful solutions that mm -hmm. were that leveraged the native kind of capabilities of Hadoop, but added on a layer of uh, you know proven technology for for best in class data quality. Um, the probably the biggest um, news over the last few weeks has been that we were acquired by a new private equity partner called Centerbridge Partners. Um, in that acquisition, they actually. Um, acquired SyncSort, and they acquired a company called Vision Solutions. Uh, and, and we've combined those organizations. When did that happen? It, the deal was announced July, early July, and it closed in the middle of August. Um, and Vision Solutions is a really interesting company. They're the leader in high availability for the IBM I market. Um, IBM I it was originally mm -hmm. called AS400, it's had a couple of different names, and, and a dominant kind of market position. Um, what we liked about that business was, A, that market position, 4,000 customers, um, generally large enterprise, and, um, and also you know, market leading capability around data replication in real time. Um, and we saw so IBM. So it's a migration I, data disaster recovery kind of thing? It's, it's DR, it's high availability, it's um, migrations, uh, it's also okay. change data capture, actually. And, um, and leveraging all kind of common kind of technology elements there. Um, but it also represents a market leading franchise in IBM I, which is you know, in, in many ways very similar to the mainframe. Run optimized for transactional systems, mm -hmm. hard to kind of get at and understand. So, so how it sounds to move like you're out. reconstructing the mainframe in the cloud. So it's not it's not like so much that as a recognition <laughs> that those those compute systems still run yeah. the world. They still run all the transactions. Well, some say the cloud the is a software mainframe. Um, as a I, distributed I think mainframe. I think over time you'll see that we we don't see that in our business today. Not we yet. do there is a cloud aspect to our business. Yeah. It's not to move those transactional applications running on those platforms into the cloud yet. Um, although I suspect that happens at some point. But our point was our our interest was more these are the the systems that are producing the world's data, and it's hard to, to get the I mean they're the big they're big power sources of data systems. I mean they're not going anywhere right. and so we've got the expertise to source that data into these next generation systems and that's a tricky problem for a lot of customers and and not something that everybody's and it's a problem they have on. and right. you guys are basically Correct. cornered the market on so, that right. so <laughs> think about big iron and big data as these two components you know be able to source data and make it productive in these next generation analytic systems and also be able to run those existing systems as you know efficiently all right as so how do you talk to customers and, and I've asked you this question before so I'll just ask it again sure. oh sync sword now you got vision you guys are just a bunch of old mainframe guys what right. do you know about cloud native right so a lot of the you know hipsters of the young guns out there might not know about some of the things you're doing on the cutting edge, because even though you have the, secured the power base right. of these old big systems, which right. are throwing off massive amounts of data that aren't going anywhere, right. you still are integrated into some cutting edge systems. Talk about that, that narrative and, and how you, why yeah, you're Yeah, so I mean the folks that we, we I target I use Cloud Native as an example. I'm yeah, just, well, so we, shiny the, new the, cool to, the toys. The organizations we target in, uh, in our, um, our customers and, and prospects, and generally we, we serve large enterprise, you know, large, complex, global enterprises, um, they are making significant investments in Hadoop and Splunk in these next generation environments. And we approach them and say, we believe to get full value out of your investments in these next generation technologies, you, it would be helpful if you had your most critical data assets available. And that's hard, and we can help you do that. And we can help you do that in a number of ways that you won't be able to find anywhere else. That includes features in our products, it includes experts on the ground, um, and what we're seeing is there's a huge demand because you know, Hadoop is really kind of, you can see it in the Cloudera and, and Hortonworks results and the scale of the revenue. I mean, this is a, you know, a real foundational component of data management at this point. Enterprises are embracing it. And if they can't solve that integration challenge between the systems that produce all the data and you know, where they want to analyze the data, th there's, a, there's a big you know, value gap. And we think we're uniquely positioned to be able to do that. One, because we've got kind of the technical expertise. Yeah. Two, they're all our customers at this yeah. point. We have 6,000 customers. You guys have executed very well, and I just got to say, you guys are just slowly taking territory down, you, and you got a great strategy, you get into a business, you don't overplay your hand, or right. get over your skis, whatever you want to call it, right. and you kind of figure it out and see if it's a fit. If it is, you grab it, if not, you move on. So also you guys have relationships, so we'll talk about mm -hmm. your ecosystem. What is sure. your ecosystem and what is your partner strategy? Sure. I'll talk a little bit about the overall strategy and I'll talk about how partners fit into that. You know, our strategy is to identify 
specific use cases that are common and challenging in our customer set that fall within this big iron to big data kind of umbrella. Um, it's, it's then to uh, deliver a solution that is highly differentiated. Now, the, the third piece of that is to partner very closely with you know, the emerging platform vendors in the, in the big data space. Um, and, and the reason for that is we, we are solving an integration challenge like for who? them. Like Cloudera, like Hortonworks, like Splunk. We launched a, a relationship with Calibra in uh, the middle of the year, we just announced a relationship Yeah, with for ASG. them, the benefit to them is they don't have to do the heavy lifting, you've got that covered. We can, we can solve a lot of pain points they have getting their platforms um, set up. And it's hard and, to replicate on their end, so it's not like they're going to go build it. Cloudera and Hortonworks, they don't have mainframe skills. Yeah. You know, they yeah. don't understand how to go access the Classic data partnering example. And, but the, the other piece is we do real engineering work with these partnerships. Yeah. So we build, you know, you know, we write code to integrate and, and add value to those by platforms. It. It's not Absolutely. a Barney deal, it's not an optical deal. Absolutely. And well, Andy Jassy is very critical at VMworld of some of the deals he's been talking to the industry and referring to his deal. That seems to be back in vogue, thank God, that people are going to say they're going to do a deal right. and they back it up with actual yeah. following through. Um, what about other partnerships? How else, how are you looking at partnering? So pretty much where it fits your business, are people coming to you, are you going to them? We certainly have people coming to us. Um, the, the key thing, you know, the, the number one driver is customers. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as we understand use cases and as customers introduce us to new uh, challenges, that they are facing, we will not just look at how do we solve it, but yeah. what are the other platforms that we're integrating with? And if we believe we can add unique value to that partner, we'll approach that partner and, and, and Let's talk customers. Give me some customer use cases that you're working on right now that are, you think are notable, worth highlighting. Sure. Um, so we do a lot in the um, in the financial services space. Uh, you know, we have a number of where customers there's <laughs> where there's a lot of mainframes, <laughs> um, but it's not just in financial services. But um, you know, we d here's an interesting one. It was an uh, insurance company, and they were uh, looking at how to transition their mainframe archive strategy. So they have regulations around how yeah. long they have to keep data. They had been using uh, you know traditional mainframe archive technology, very expensive on an annual basis, and also unflexible. They yeah. didn't have access to they the data. Too. At the end of the day, don't forget performance. They want performance. This was more of an archive use case, and what they really wanted was an ability to both access the data and also lower the cost of storing that data for the um, required time from a regulation perspective. Um, and so they made the decision that they wanted to store it in the cloud. They wanted to store it in, in S3. Um, there's a complicated data movement there. There's a complicated data translation uh, process there. And uh, and you need to understand the mainframe, and you need to understand you know AWS and S3 and all those components. Um, and we had all those pieces and all that expertise, and we're able to solve that. And so we're doing that with a few different customers now. Um, but that's just an example of you know there's a great ROI, there's a lot more business flexibility, um, and there's a modernization aspect to it that's just very attractive. Well, great to hear from you today. I'm glad you made it up here. Again, you were in D.C. yesterday. Thanks for coming in and checking out two shows. You're certainly pounding the pavement, as they say in New York, uh, to quote a New Yorker phrase. Uh, what's, up, what's new for you guys? What's coming out? More acquisitions happening? What are you guys going to, so what's the outlook for SyncSource? So we're, we're always active on, uh, on the M&A front, and we certainly have a pipeline of, of activities, and there's a lot of different, you know, interesting spaces, adjacencies that we're exploring right now. Um, there's nothing that I can really talk about there, but there's certainly... Um, can you talk about the categories you're looking at? Sure, you know, things around um, uh, metadata management, things around kind of real-time data movement, uh, cloud opportunities. Um, there's, uh, there's some interesting opportunities in um, the artificial intelligence and machine learning space. So, you know, those deep are all... Learning. Um, and deep learning. And, and deep learning. Those are all interesting spaces yeah. for us to think about. Um, security is another space that's interesting. So, um, so we're pretty active in a lot yeah, of adjacent so classic adjacent and markets that you're looking yeah. at. So you take one step at a time, slow, yeah. slow. Uh, but, but then we try to innovate on, on you know, after the catch, right? So, um, you know, we d we did three announcements this week. Um, you know, transaction tracing for IronStream, and uh, <coughs> a uh, kind of a refresh of a data quality on for Hadoop uh, approach. Um, and so we'll continue to innovate uh, on the organic side as well. Final question on the whole private equity thing. So that's done. Yeah. So they put a big bag of money in there and brought the two companies together. Mm -hmm. Is there structural changes, management changes? You're the Sync Sort CEO, or you, is there a new co name? Is so it, we're what's the, it the, called? the combined companies will operate under the Sync Sort name. Okay. I'm, I'll serve as the, uh, the so CEO. So Sync Sort is the, is the 
remaining it's name. Yep. And you guys now have the other company under it. Yeah, that's right. That's okay. right. Yep. And exactly. cash they put in, probably a boatload of cash. So the, 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 uh, the appetite for corporate development. The announced deal value is one point two billion dollars, a little over one point two billion dollars. Good. So, and so you get a checkbook looking to buy companies? We are we are gonna yeah. continue we as I said yesterday, today uh, you know, I like to believe that we've proved the hypothesis for it about the second inning. Yeah. You know, can't yeah. wait to keep playing the game. You know, it's interesting, just real quick while I got you, I know we got a break coming up for the guys, but Private equity move is a good move in, in these transitional markets. You and I have talked about this in the past yeah. off camera is that yeah. it's a great thing to do is take, if you're public and you're not really knocking it out of the park, kill the 90 day shot clock, go private. There seems to be a lot of movement there, retool and then yeah. reemerge stronger. Yeah, yeah. so we've, we've never been public, but um, I will say the Center Bridge team has been terrific. Uh, yeah. A lot of resources there. And uh, and certainly we 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 do talk. Of, we're still very quarterly focused, but um, I think we've got a great partner and look forward to continuing. The background. waves are coming. Get ready. The big waves are coming. So get your big surfboard out, as yeah. we say in California. Josh, thanks for spending the time. Uh, Josh Rogers, CEO of SyncSoar, here on the Cube. More live coverage in New York. After this break, stay with us for our day two of three days of coverage of Big Data NYC, the our event that we hold every year here in conjunction with Hadoop World, right around the corner. I'm John Furrier, we'll be right back.